Hello, Tim Karen here from Mortgage Choice in Kingsley. If you're watching this video, you're probably well aware that interest rates are going up at the moment, so I thought it might help to give a little bit more of a longer term context to what we're seeing. If you go to the Reserve Bank's website, um, which can be found at this URL, what you'll be able to see is, well, this. Um, a list every month of the publication they make when the board of the Reserve Bank meets to decide what to do with monetary policy. Um, and it's got this handy little graph that you can just hover over and check out the rate at any point. So what we can see right now is that the cash rate is at 1.35. What we can see um, is that back uh, about a year before COVID, it was almost the same, it was 1.5. Back at the time of the GFC, it was 7.25 just before rates got slashed. And way back here um, in the 90s at the start of this graph, which is not the start of when the Reserve Bank came into existence, that was back in 1960, um, but back in 1990, 17.5% as the cash rate. So I just wanted to focus on that history and just think about what's going on right now in the context of that history. So. If we think about the last few years, what we can see is that really, up until about a year before COVID, um, the cash rate had been stable for a very long time at an amount that is slightly higher than where we're at now, over here. Things dwindled a bit in the year leading up to COVID, and then when COVID happened and everything happened, the official cash rate of the Reserve Bank of Australia went from there to there didn't really change much. It's in the context of history, it seemed like a lot of the time. Um, but then it stayed down at a, a figure that's alarmingly close to zero. Um, and what we see now, um, everybody talking about rates going up and there have been three rate rises in the last three months, 0.25 in May, 0.5 in June and another 0.5 in July. We're actually just back to where we were a bit before COVID. Now a bit before COVID, I remember, I've been a mortgage broker since back here. And I saw all of that and all of that and all of that. And I remember back here, as rates were coming down, everyone was saying, oh my gosh, these are the lowest rates I've ever seen in my whole life. And it's true, they were the lowest rates that ever been in the, in the history of the Reserve Bank. And so people thought it was amazing and people were deciding to fix at these rates um, and people were deciding to buy property uh, over renting because repayments were so cheap because interest rates were so low. Now suddenly rates have gone up. And it's important to understand that we're just back to what we thought was amazing only a few years ago. So to me, it doesn't make that much logical sense for something that was amazing a few years ago to suddenly be the sort of thing that's going to tear us all apart. We've been assessing people's ability to borrow money by adding a 3% buffer on, um, which is enough to take us up to around, uh, around the 5% mark. So all back here, we were assessing people's ability to pay their loans off as if the rate was going to go up to 5%. It's nowhere near that. We've still got plenty of room for error. It's also interesting to think a bit further back. Um, if you remember the GFC, the cash rate got up to 7.25 compared to the 1.35 it is now. 7.25 back um, when Lehman Brothers collapsed in the US and the global financial crisis happened, something that affected the entire world, just like our pandemic. So our pandemic has affected the whole world and it's affected our cash rate like that. The global financial, financial crisis, the GFC, had a much bigger impact and rates dropped a lot more back then. So in the context of what happened back then, this is actually, as far as interest rates are concerned, much more of a blip on the radar. And then, of course, the other thing that I've been hearing a lot lately is from people who, who remember borrowing money 30-odd years ago. The thing to appreciate is that back then, when you borrowed money, you, you were borrowing a much smaller multiple of your income than you are now in order to buy a house. Um, and so back then rates could be higher and it wouldn't affect people by as much compared to if we did that now. So the thing that the Reserve Bank knows is that if they put rates up anything near that, because people are borrowing a much higher multiple of their property value now, sorry, because people are borrow, borrowing a much higher multiple of their income now, um, there are a lot more uh, people are, are, are a lot more sensitive to interest rate rises than we used to be because we've borrowed more compared to our income than we used to back when interest rates were eighteen percent. So I think the eighteen percent thing is a little bit of a furphy now. It, it just doesn't make sense that rates could go anywhere near that high 
um, without a lot of things breaking first and the makers of monetary policy understand that. If you read what um, the governor of the Reserve Bank and the Reserve Bank Board says in those statements they release each month um, that you can download here, you'll see that they're well aware of that and they're well aware of the impact it has on households when they do change rates. So I hope that gives you a bit of perspective. That's one way to think about it. And of course, everybody's situation is different. And if you have borrowed a large multiple of your income, of course, you will be sensitive to rate rises that are happening. Um, but maybe a simple rule of thumb when you're thinking about a rate rise is to just think about if you multiply that rate rise by your loan amount, that's how much you're going to be affected per year. So if you owe $500,000 and the rate goes up, 1%, that's going to affect you by $5,000 a year. Divide that by 12, that's roughly, it's not quite that simple, but that's roughly how much your monthly um, repayment's going to change. Um, but we've proven if we've gotten you a home loan in the last 10 or 15 years, we've proven that you can afford it at a rate that's 3% higher um, than what you got at the time. So I hope that helps you think things through. And if you've got any more questions or any questions at all, please don't be afraid to get hold of me. Um, and one thing you should be aware of is that I'm helping a lot of people get their rates reduced at the moment as well. Um, and so I might be able to save you some money anyway. Thanks for listening.